I am about Manchester United. I'm about what is best for Manchester United. And what is best for Manchester United is this fucking criminal is out of this football club, bruv. So if I have to put on my Mo Salah shirt on <laughs> Sunday to get Oli out, that is what I am willing to do um, to um, save our season. Um. Spartans, what is your profession? <laughs> Yes, people, another edition of Nights of the Roundtable Discussions, where we discuss all sports all the time. Got my guy, The Truth, with me. How are you doing, sir? All good in the hood, man. This guy, honestly, with that. I, I don't know why he still has that scarf in the background. How do I, you man? <laughs> I, need to, I need to get my Vieira Kinsa Palace um, scarf. <laughs> I, I told you you would see a masterclass. Masterclass performance. There was only one team in that game. I can't believe you lot escaped with a draw, to be honest. What do you mean, you lot? We should have won. <laughs> we should have won. Me and my boy Vieira, we, we had tactics on point. What are you saying? You're, you're one of the eagles now, yeah? Hey, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an eagle now. I can't, I can't, I, I don't, I don't want to be associated with this team when, when that stupid manager is there, fam. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how bad it is? Yeah, I'm think I'm actually considering whether whether I would take Ole. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I How's will take Arteta any day. I'm thinking it's so bad. Yeah, I look at I look at across at Manchester. I'm thinking, you know what? Would would Ole be so bad? <laughs> yes, he'd be worse. He'd be worse. I take Arteta all day long. Oh, wow, hey, you don't know what you're saying, man. You don't know what you're saying. You're talking about the guy that masterminded the combat oh the days, mighty, against the mighty Atalanta. <laughs> <laughs> you can't laugh at At- Atalanta on a powerhouse. Atalanta are a d- decent mm-hmm. side. They play good football, but as I said in the group, bruv, tailor-made for Oli football. Tailor-made. But how <laughs> people... <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Footy Chat, the Prem Show, getting all your football stuff from last week and this upcoming week. Um, you can see the truth and I are as deluded and delusional <laughs> as anyone else because we're just fucking fed up. <laughs> um, but yes, we're going to be talking all things football, including the big game of at, at the weekend but people as usual before we start make sure to like share comment and subscribe to the channel get the likes up get the subscriptions up all that good stuff share 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 as i say all the time we are here only channel on youtube who gives you so many different sports with so much good content so much good banter and um, yeah, make sure you smash that like button and hit the notifications as well. And don't forget to join our social media pages. Links are in the description. I didn't want to do this, yeah, because after what I saw saw in that Champions League game, I'm just like, I think I'm, I think, I think I'm about almost done with football. <laughs> How could you be done when the guy masterminded? Oh my your players, now your players let him down in the first half. He got the troops in, yeah. He got the troops in, galvanized them, and they came out playing for Ole. What more can you ask for? <laughs> you know what, right? Like, you know the biggest joke. The only thing I can agree with is that they they wanted to win the game. That's all I can say. Like. We've seen time and time again that anytime this guy's in trouble, these players bail him out. So I think when you hear fans say that the players aren't playing for him, I, I can't necessarily agree with that. But oh, apart from that, like that first half was abysmal. Atalanta, um, it was awful. It was Why? awful. Not because you guys had loads of chances though. Not in the first half. Not in the first half, in the second half. The first half, the first, first half. I think Ronaldo had a chance. Rashford hit the crossbar. Yeah, I think by that, I don't remember anything else. I think was it Fred that was through one on one. Oh yeah, Fred, Fred, 
Fred was through on his right foot as well. Mm. Um, so there was a couple of tries, but not man. Now, defensively, it was shocking. Midfield was open. Um, and the two goals were easy. They yeah, were easy goals, like easy Another goals to concede. They didn't even work hard for it. Um, going in 2 0 down, is, I, said, I said to ST, you saw ST saying in the group, but I was just like, just wait, bruv, because yeah. I just knew something bad was going to happen. I knew, <laughs> right? I something bad. And then as soon as Rashford scored that early goal in the second half, and credit to Rashford because he looked pretty good um, yesterday. Yeah. Um, I knew, I knew from there. And you know what? You know what was the tipping point? My missus is here. You know what the tipping point was the when same? Zapata had those two chances. Yeah. And De Gea saved them. I yeah. said from then, United are going to come back and win this game. <laughs> and lo and behold, that fridge on toes who was awful, awful. Went and scored and equalised. And then, obviously, as I've said many a time, if he gets service, he will score. Yeah. And he did with a, a, a very good header. And you know, um, to, be, to be fair, he should have had a hat-trick because he missed chances. Yeah. But I think finally, uh, I don't know if it's, it was by design or whether the players took it upon themselves, but your fullbacks finally getting crosses into the box. <laughs> Into someone that can head the ball with the best of them, that's Ronaldo. You know, they should have been getting balls into the box a long time ago, but um, yeah, so he got the ball in the box, finished with a very good header, you would say, and doing just Ronaldo things. <clears throat> this is it, and I, 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 I said, I said to, I said it to you, uh, in the uh, when we talked about a transfer window, and I did, I said to you he will look a shadow of what he looked like at Juventus. And that's exactly what's happened yeah. in, in the past games because he's not getting service. And if he's mm-hmm. not getting service, he's a passenger. That's, that, 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 that's what it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of Oli, it wasn't a masterclass. He didn't do anything. I said Atalanta was tailor-made because of the way how they play. High lines, right? Mm-hmm. If you can give Oli anything, is high lines, right? <laughs> and Atalanta playing a high line with Rashford getting in behind Greenwood. Even the thirty-six-year-old Christi- Cristiano causes problems, mm. um, bro. It was inevitable. It was inevitable. If Atalanta would have made it three-one, the game would have been done, mm-hmm. and Oli would have been sacked after Sunday. <laughs> but now that he, now that um, he's gotten this win and the manner of it. It just papers over the cracks, as we can see Paul Scholes said on BT Sport. For, for me, I was, dead. I was chuffed that United came back and won. I couldn't be happier. I thought the unfair pressure on, um, on Ole, on my boss Solly, was building. And I was worried that the Liverpool game you know, we'll put more undue pressure on him. But now he can relax. He can sit back. Um, I talked to him recently. He said, yep, we're ready to park the military bus <laughs> against Liverpool <laughs> and escape with a draw. So, boy, I'm not going to lie. The pressure was good. After that first half, the wolves were out. <laughs> Funnily enough, yeah, the only wolf that wasn't out was TJ. <laughs> <laughs> TJ stayed in the game, but the Wolves were out for Ole everywhere. My group, all my groups on my WhatsApp was popping off. I was like, <laughs> but the one person that remained quiet was you. And that's the shocking thing, because you're the president of the Ole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, because I knew, bro, listen, you see Ole's witch doctor, yeah? <laughs> it, he, when I tell you, bro, his witch doctor will go down in history as yeah. the best of his generation, right? <laughs> because the amount of times that this guy has gone to this doctor and said, listen, I need that Norwegian judge, bruv. He's like, I need that, I need that Lord of the Rings judge, bruv. Like, literally. And he's gone to the well and he uh, and spelled him out every single time. So even, even um, the Leicester game, when we were um when it when we went what was it was it two did we go two one down yeah yeah we went two one down and then Rashford made it two two I was just like see here we go but 
the difference was which doctor must have been on holiday that day, bruv. <laughs> because Leicester went and did the business and Leicester showed. The one thing I will say uh, is Leicester showed when you're a decent team, how much you can destroy this United team in, ten, in a 10 minute spell. And that's exactly what Leicester did, right? Villarreal did it, didn't have the players. I said, if Chuck Wazy and Moreno were playing, that game would have been over. Atalanta, bear in mind, right? And this is why I don't get gassed by these polysexuals. Atalanta had five first team players out, five, oh, really? and we barely beat them, oh. right? So you bring those guys back in, that probably doesn't happen. And Zapata didn't start, and he's their top goal scorer as well. So maybe if all those guys start, yesterday doesn't happen and they win the game. And then we're coming up to Liverpool, bruv. A Liverpool side who we've only beaten once in the last 10 games in the Premier League. 10 games? Yep. We've only beaten them once in the last 10 games in the league. I know we won't beat them in the FA Cup last season. Was it last yeah. season or the season before? I can't remember which one it was. Was it last season? Last January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been in the FA Cup. But in the league, we've only beaten them once in 10 games. And that was Jose, the 2-1. You know when Rashford pissed all over yeah. Trent? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the, that is the last time we've beaten Liverpool. And we haven't beaten them in, in 10. I think, we've, I think the record's like 1-1, drawn 6, lost 3 um, against Liverpool in the last 10 games. So it's looking... It, bro, listen. <laughs> Sunday is going to be peak. Let's just go back to the Leicester game mm -hmm. because when Man United lose, they lose. I don't know what the word is. There's loads of talking points when they lose. So we're talking about Harry Maguire being rushed back. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Matic and Pogba in midfield. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the perpetual issue that's Where's Donny van der Beek? Has he been locked up? Has he been sleeping with Ollie's wife? You know. <laughs> um, where was Ronaldo in the Leicester game? Because no one knew that if he was playing. Mm, well, I didn't know he was playing, to be honest. I thought we were down to 10 men. Um, losing to a team at Leicester who were on a four-game winless run, I think. Yeah, they were awful. They hadn't won in ages. Yeah. Without NDD. You know, with mm -hmm. a very, very big player. Without Ndidi, without Justin, without Fofana. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so the questions were coming up. There's always talking points for the, for United um, and every United don't get a result. And the only thing that I would say is that why was Maguire rushed back? Do you think Ole has favourites within that team? Of course he does. Of course he does. He's got favourites. Maguire is his favourite. Rashford is his favourite. McTominay is his favourite. Bruno is his favourite. Those are his four favourite players. Like they, oh, and Fat Shaw is his favourite <laughs> as well. Like those, those five are, are, are his favourites. So you notice that whenever they're injured, those are the ones that get rushed rush back and thrown straight back in the team. Yeah, you don't true. see... You don't see Pogba getting thrown straight back in. You don't see Martial getting thrown straight back in. Um, you don't see Fred getting thrown straight back in. Hmm? No, no, no. Oh, yeah. But so he's got his favourites, and he rushed back the, the he rushed back Maguire purely because Varane's out injured. So yeah, well, he panicked because he doesn't trust he doesn't he doesn't trust Bay. He doesn't trust Bay. I'm not going to say he doesn't trust Lindelof because he does. He doesn't trust Bay when Bay is probably better than the two of them, right? When he's I, on I form. I know he didn't trust Bailly, but we're talking about a guy who's already as slow as it is. You cannot throw him back a month out when he's not, you know, Gary, and I think, as I said, Gary Neville's been alluding to it, but he just doesn't want to call names. He did say you don't trust thrust a guy like Maguire in back in after a month out straight into a high-intensity game when he's going to be up against the likes of Jamie Vardy in the actual that are just going to hound you and harass you and will do you for pace. And you could tell. Um, mm. I won't say he had a part to play in all goals, but he didn't marshal the back line. He was at fault for, for, he was at fault for two of those goals. Mm. 
you didn't master the black for me you didn't master the back back line enough for all of those goals even the Vardy one he should have been uh, communicating with his team obviously not the first goal obviously was definitely his fault um I'm trying to think what goal obviously the set piece mm-hmm. again so yeah that's the only thing I would say Ole got wrong but Matic and Pogba what was the thinking yeah. behind that? Bruv, Matt, Oli got everything wrong that day. Um, rushing Maguire back didn't make sense. He's a fridge. He's a fridge. So why would you bring him back to go up against Vardy and Iheanacho? It doesn't make sense. I don't care if he played with them. Yeah. Like, he's a fridge, bruv. He does not move. He's not mobile. Don't bring him in. That would have been the perfect game for Bae because Bae yeah. is our quickest centre-back. Yeah. So what, what the damn doesn't make sense. Pogba, the, the, the whole Pogba and Matic thing... I don't know what that was about, to be honest. Obviously, Fred was um, couldn't play because he was away with Brazil. Um, yeah. Mc, McToilet, I don't know where he was. I don't know why he didn't play. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Matic hasn't got... I've said it before. If we're going to play our best three in midfield, our best three in midfield, it depends on what style of football that you want to play. The mm. style of football that Oli wants to play, you don't play Pogba and Maj because it's not going to work. Yeah. If you had Pep style of play, the midfield three is Matic, Fred and Pogba all day long because it's possession-based, it's passing through the lines and it's keeping the ball. But Oli doesn't do that. So him playing Pogba and Matic, I just think that he didn't know what else to do. He was, so you'll probably say he was trying to freshen it up and I think it was a little dig at the ball to say I need a central midfielder or else I can't win the league because we all know that United can't win the league without a central midfielder as all the mm-hmm. pundits make it known that <laughs> oh, they need a centre midfielder to win it. <laughs> um, now nah, you got everything wrong that day um, and it showed. Like, as, you, as we saw, the biggest thing that was being called out is the pressing game. You can't, oh, yeah. press, with, you yeah. can't press with Cristiano, right, because he's not going to do it. Uh, Bruno's had oh yeah and that's the other thing you're playing free in midfield Bruno's not the, Bruno Fernandez does not play in midfield mm-hmm. he does not play in midfield so you're yeah. playing 4-2-4 which is what <laughs> Oli did in the first half at the Atalanta game and the same thing happened right and this is the problem that we have with Bruno but until you get a manager that allows Bruno to be disciplined this is the shit that he's going to do and it's going to leave both our midfielders exposed. It happened with McFred and it happened with Podra and Matic. It doesn't play, matter who you play in that team midfield, they're yeah. going to get exposed because Bruno wants to play second striker. So when you saw the half little press between from Bruno, Ronaldo, um, hmm. Gunwood, right? The only one that was pressing, and I think they brought up a stat about it saying that how when you bring up, bring up the, the, the players that press the most and do the most sprints, Jaden is the only one in the top 12. And why is that? Because he's coming from Dortmund, who mm. always press high. Mm. Right? That's, what, that's why when they say, oh, Jaden doesn't track back, the reason why he doesn't track back is because he's <laughs> used to a style in the system where they press yeah. high and win the ball high. So he mm. doesn't have to track back. All right? But... What they got what exposed. Really not to, and mm. this the scary thing for me, even though I'm a huge Ole Inner, the pre- the scary thing for me was that I saw Mourinho football come back. I saw Mourinho, and what's the, what I mean by Mourinho f- football for people that don't know or just watch football on a casual level is that you cannot press and play a low block at the same time. Exactly. You cannot press. You have to take your risk with your slow defenders and push up, or you have the low block. You can't do you can't do both. Because then you have your midfield told it don't matter how good the press is, you're leaving your midfield totally on guard. You're leaving your midfield literally four against two, depending on what player drops in and drops out, comes in and comes out, playing the um, you know, playing the ball into midfield. Mm. And when you got someone as slow as Matic. And Pogba, who doesn't have that discipline, it was... They said it, and Brendan Rodgers said that was a plan. Like, he knew what was coming, and he said that mm-hmm. was a plan. That, you know, it's never been easier, as easy to play through United. So, <clears throat> Ole said he knows what to do. 
<clears throat> so he's got a plan. And this is what I've been waiting for because he's about to pull out his ace. You know, he's about to pull out his secret weapon, his strategy against Liverpool this Sunday. I am expecting a hard fought 1 0 or 0 0. This is, this is what I think, because I think you know more than most. You're, you're giving me that face, like, but you know, you know, the more you want him out, the, the more you want Ole out, the harder he holds up. <laughs> the tighter that grip is. It's like you're trying to, you're trying to try and stamp on his hands here, so he lets go. He's trying to hang up, and the tighter he gets. So you know that he's got a performance up his sleeve, and I think that's going to happen at Liverpool. Um, how he stops that man there on the right. Um, well, on your left is uh is up for debate. But what's his record against you guys? I swear, no, he scored his first goal two seasons ago against you guys. He scored last year as well, didn't it? In the four two. And in the FA Cup, I think. So yep. yeah. So stopping that guy is gonna be point number one because hmm. at this moment in time, I know you said Benzema, but Salah. You have to say, you have to say he's showing some signs of being the best in the world right now. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I said, I said, there's not much in it between the two of them. I think the difference, the reason why I put Benzi over Salah is just yes. because of the team that Benzema's playing in compared to the team that Salah's playing in. That's Ooh. it. But there's barely anything in it, and then can't forget Lewandowski as well, bruv. It's <laughs> like again, but obviously he, his detriment is the league that he's playing in, but. Bro, yeah. Mo Salah, yeah, what is he? What I think he's got twelve and eleven this season or something like that. Um, he's not being stopped. The reason why <laughs> he's not being stopped is because he's going down the side where Luke Shaw and Harry Maguire are. So he's not being stopped because that is that, like he's he's licking his Mo Salah is licking his lips right now. Rashford starting this game, by the way, on the left. Listen, right? If there was ever a time, right? Now, obviously, I want United to lose. But if there was ever a time where I need Rashford to destroy and rape somebody, it is Sunday, bruv. Because I am sick and tired of this Trent's the best in the world nonsense, bruv. I'm sick of it. Like, don't get me wrong. Yes, he can cross a ball, right? Yes, he's the top. He he's the, gives the assist to Liverpool. This Batio still can't defend, bruv. He cannot defend, bruv. So, it, if there was ever a time that Rashford needed to be on his A game, it is um, this Sunday. Unfortunately, he limped off the game against Atalanta, so I don't oh, know. Really? Set. Yeah, but I, I, I think it was cramp. Yeah. I think it was cramp, so he should be available, but yeah. I, I, um, another thing Ole can't do is just keep bringing these guys back after injury and then playing them every single game. Like, it's She's going to burn these players to the ground. This is what Ali does, bro. Look look at what he did to Rashford last season. Rashford was injured from, like, January. Mm. And Ali played him every game and burned him out and made him hurt himself more than needed be to the point where Rashford, even though we know he's a dumb footballer, but he just looked extra dumb because he he wasn't mobile enough. Um, but, But Ali will continue to do it. He'll continue to keep rushing guys back because he, he has he has no faith in himself. Yeah. So he has to trust the individuals. But my Jurgen, Jurgen, my guy Jurgen, you know I wanted you after Fergie retired. Do the business. But Do the no, fucking business. There's no way. Yeah. yeah. There's no way that uh, other United fan you want to lose to Liverpool. Jurgen. Jurgen. Do the business. There's no right. way as a United fan that you want to lose to Liverpool. Surely. Bro, you Surely. know I don't. You know, you know my hatred is for Chelsea more than Liverpool. All right. All right. So, Liverpool. Yeah, I, bro, listen. I am about Manchester United. I'm about what is best for Manchester United. And what is best for Manchester United is this fucking criminal is out of this football club, bruv. So if I have to put on my Mo Salah shirt on Sunday to get Oli out, that is what I am willing 
to do I'm, to save I'm, our season. I've told you this many, many times. There's no way, zero ways that the Glazers give Ole a three-year three extension. Yeah? And then say in a few games, no matter what happens, Ole, we're letting you go. Glazers, Man United, do not have that money to go and pay off Ole and get a high-profile manager in. It is impossible. He is here for the long term, at least until the end of the season. At least. Nah. So, you guys need to strap in. Uh, l- listen, listen. If we lose to Liverpool, that's seven points behind Liverpool Yeah. after nine games. That's If Chelsea win, which they should beat Norwich, that's eight points behind them. Six points behind Man City after nine games, right? I We then go to next week, we lose to Man City. That then makes it nine points behind Man City. It'd be 10 behind Liverpool and 11 behind Chelsea going into an international break in November. And you're, you would be 11 points behind the top of the table with after, after the international break with Tottenham, Chelsea and Arsenal to come, right? As far as I'm concerned, yes, he's bought himself time now. So realistically, he will be here after the international break, right? But it doesn't, it doesn't stop there. By that Arsenal game, he could be 13 points or more behind the top of the table, right? To coincide with, he could still be the first manager to make Cristiano Ronaldo play Europa League. <laughs> if United don't qualify at the Champions League and this guy is double figures behind the top of the table by December, which I called, he will not be here because the fans will not allow the Glazers to keep this man. I don't care what you have to say. You can try and wind me up as much as you want. I know for a fact, double figures behind first place and Europa League, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, three-year extension or not, will not survive because the attention will turn to the Glazers getting rid. And the one thing the Glazers don't want because ollie has been their puppet for this long is the fans back onto them because then the talk turns to Glazers out, which it should no, it be. Won't. It but... won't because it's got no power behind it. Saying Glazers out now has zero power behind it because there's no, be no energy because it's impossible to, because they spent the money. That's what you guys it's not about spending. No, no, no. This has nothing to do with spending the money. This is the fact that this manager is no longer good enough. So all you need to do, we're not saying you need to go and spend money and you didn't back Oli. As fans, they won't be saying that. It's a case of time to go. Time to go. Here's your P45. Suck your mum and go back to Norway. That's what, it, that's what it is. That's what it is. Like, the only reason, that's the only reason why the fans will get onto them because it's like, nah, let's cut this guy loose, bruv. So, yeah, don't be wrong. Realistically, and Truth knew it as well when I was saying it last week, I know that he's probably got till Christmas. But that's it. After, after that, he's, he's done for. After that run, because I, I, I was watching, I was watching Rance's channel and someone said something that made sense. You're not going to bring a manager in after the City game where you still got to play Chelsea, Tottenham and Arsenal in that run. So I fully expect it after Christmas, like Oli to be gone, especially if, as I said, double figures behind the top. And if he's in the Europa, if he goes, if he gets United into the Europa League, he'll be sat that night. <laughs> They'll be sat that well, night. From who? Well, which one of his boys, yeah, is going to sack him? No, the Glazers aren't. His, the Glazers love him, but they know that he's collateral damage. If no. it protects them, they will get rid. They will cut loose. Yes, he's got everyone underneath him, underneath, beneath them. But at the end of the day, the Glazers, if they've got to cut loose, they'll cut loose. Because they're like, hold on, so you're, you've costed me money again. Because remember, we went into the Europa League, so you costed me money again, right? And you're nowhere near to winning the Premier League with a they team that should be challenging. They only nah. care about top four. Of course, they only care to, about top four. That that is true. I cannot deny that. But at the same time, they know they don't want the fans calling their name, so mm. they will do what is necessary to get out, bro. But yeah, Salah, Mane, obviously Mane last week getting um his hundredth goal in the Premier League. Firmino bagging the hat trick, bro. 
24 in all competitions. It's curtains. Jürgen, do the business, bruv. Do the business. <laughs> yep. And the same thing. This time next week, when we're recording again, I'll be saying, Pep, do the business. <laughs> right? We are on a one-way trip to finally getting this man out of Manchester United so we can try and save our season Look, and at least try and win the FA Cup. The real fans won't allow it. What, the like, what do you mean? The real, the real fans were booing him at half-time. I'm, I'm talking about the Chelsea fans, the Man City fans, the Liverpool <laughs> fans, the Arsenal fans. We won't allow it. We will not allow it. We will go outside and protest. <laughs> and have Ole in. And have Ole in. <laughs> oh man, bro. Like, like, you know what, yeah. Credit where credit's due, yeah. You see your uh, you Arsenal fans. Now I now I know how you lot felt with Benga, bro. But you just wouldn't leave. They just wouldn't get rid, bro. I I look no no with Venga, that was wrong. We focused the energy on the wrong person. I always went to wanted Venga to stay. I just wanted the board to, and I still want the board to leave. But now I want the board and Arteta to leave. So that's the only difference. <laughs> straight into straight yeah. into this. Yeah, bro. Listen, yeah. hey. Huh? Hmm? Rash. No, no, no. It's two. <laughs> this is this is why we don't invite Rash, you know. <laughs> bro, listen, and no one can't t- listen, no one can't tell me that I abandoned this guy, bro. Nah, I put it in the group. Man knew I said yes, we're doing it. That's not my business, bro. But yeah, um, it's abandoned, so Exactly. Um, but yeah, man, listen, hey, listen, you won the league on Monday, bruv. Knee slides uh, with lack of blood clot zet, bruv. Um, scoring the winning goal. <laughs> bruv, that invincible. <laughs> I, hey, I still felt sorry for Vieira, bruv, because... Um, so did I. They should have won, bruv. It was a Crystal Palace without Wilfred Zaha as well, and they played well, bruv. Like, you wanted Ben Teke to play, and he went and scores. No, I, I said it, though. I said, even though he always scores against us, I'd rather take... But I didn't know... I didn't know they were going to play him and Edward. That's what made mm. him so dangerous. But they, yeah, they played him and Edward, didn't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what made him so dangerous. Like, I like, I'm, I like Edward. I always knew he was going to be a decent player. Yeah, he's a good player, bruv. He's a good player. Um... Uh, but, but yeah, bro, like, listen, hey, 2-2. Two, two. Um, to be fair, Brighton are in good form. I mean, they are in good form. I'm, no, sorry, where am I getting Brighton from? I'm thinking two weeks ago. <laughs> I mean, Villa, um, Palace, Palace. <laughs> now I'm thinking forward thinking, bro. What's going on? <laughs> Palace, bro. Palace are in decent form. Obviously, no Wilfred Zaha. Um, Aubameyang started well, got the goal. Um, and Palace just came back in. Just, it's not, it's not okay. So, taking everything off, it's not that Palace came back in. That game proved how crap this manager is. And I get... You know what? Do you know it's a common common theme? Mourinho. That's why I'm glad he got his ass beaten 6-1 today. Because Mourinho is a guy who made this popular thing of going 1-0 up and sitting back and counter-attacking into fashion. What we should have done is gone for the throat. No, I hate, I hate. Why are we sitting back to counterattack a team that's not even good on the ball? It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Why are you a let a team have the ball? They're not good on the ball. Why are you letting that? We should, it just, it makes me miss the days. When we, and when the Invincibles went 1-0 up, I, I used to put my feet up and be like, yep, yeah, where's the second? When's the third? When's the fourth? When's the fifth? You used to relax, you used to be confident. I only used to be nervous until we got the first goal. As soon as the first goal went in, I used to kick back and relax. Now, I'm telling you the way I felt after the early goal. I knew, I knew shit was going to hit the fan. I knew it. I just knew it. At 1-0, I knew it. I wasn't happy about even, I wasn't even happy about scoring early because I knew what Arteta was going to do. Sit back and play the counter-attack. Yes, it'll work against teams that's actually good on the ball, like like a Tottenham. But but against like Palace, like why would you do that? And you know it's, uh, he needs to go, man. I'm so tired of him. I'm so tired. The squad is so much better. And, and look what he did. Saka got injured. He comes off. 
to be it's fair, like MacArthur should have been sent off, bruv. <laughs> like that was criminal, no, bruv. To be honest, I don't care because you shouldn't be relying on sending us for a team like Palace. As good as they are, we should be aiming for something something higher than that. So I don't care about the sending us, to be honest. And um he brings on Lokonga instead of Martinelli, instead of Lacazette. You know, he's just a clueless man. And, and I know he's saying, oh, like is it? And just put Aubameyang out wide because he only scores the odd goal anyway. To be fair, Lacazette changed the game he when showed, he came on. He showed enthusiasm. Mm. You know, he was driving, he was g up the fans and everything. Like, uh, I like, I know how wasteful he is, but I like that energy. Mm. I like the energy at least. And we don't even get that from our captain. So, um, look, this guy needs to go. I'm, I'm pleading. Get, we need to get him gone. When are the fans going to start flipping, forcing him out, like you guys are starting to force out Ole? Like, I need him gone. I need him gone. The thing is, is that this is the problem. I think he's going to last the whole season. Um, purely because I think your board is worse than ours. And... Yeah, um, I think they'll accept the mediocrity. So your board, I think your board's conquest is to just get back in Europe. I think if Arteta gets you in the Europa League and he could win the League Cup, I think your board would be satisfied. They would be. And and, and that's the problem. Because obviously, and I think there has to be some realistic expectations because being out for so long from the Champions League, I can't see the board saying you need to get champions, the top four, and that's win a trophy. I know that's what expected, but I think realistically, considering where you lot have been, I can't see the board saying, oh yeah, get I back would, in the top I, four. Hmm? I would say that, yeah, hmm. if Man United were on the level of Chelsea, City and Liverpool, that fourth place is up for grabs. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It's up for grabs. And the thing is, is that you look, you look, you, listen, hey, that fourth place up for grabs, but not just us, bruv. You got West Ham, you got Leicester, oh, you got Brighton, you got Tottenham, bruv. Tottenham are above us. <laughs> okay, like, after we, yeah. After, we, after I've been, ta- we've been taking the piss out of them. <laughs> hear, hear the joke. <laughs> hear, the, hear the joke, yeah. Tottenham are four points clear of us after we beat them two weeks ago, three weeks ago. That's mad. Four points. It's, it's, this is it's uh, this is this is. I think I think someone sent the thing around. Yeah, Arsenal and, and and Man United. They went from Alex Ferguson and Wenger to Oli to and Arteta. <laughs> bruv, that's how that's how far things have fallen for the both of us, bruv. Yeah. Like you got Man City, who only became relevant ten years ago, right? With mm-hmm. Pep. Chelsea, who became relevant 15 years ago with Tuchel and obviously winning all the trophies. And then obviously Liverpool, who went on a barren spell, but are now relevant with Klopp. And we've gone from dominating to being touted as being Europa League, <laughs> Europa League teams. And the only, the only difference between you lot and us is our squad is twice as better than yours. But mm-hmm. we're still in the same boat. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're still in the same boat. That is the joke. But um, I, listen, I, 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 Arteta, I, and, and someone, someone said something. I think I remember hearing it, and it was a case of Klopp was at Malmo, Dortmund, then he got Liverpool. Pep mm. did Barcelona B, and then Barcelona Bayern and City. Two shell. Who was too sharp before Dortmund? Did he do the Malmo as well? Mm. <sighs> Tooth, do you know? I want to say, he yeah, did. he was at. Um, oh, but I, I, I'm not gonna say. My, I think it was mine. Mainz. Oh, oh Mainz. Mainz. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Mainz. I said Malmo, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, Mainz. Yeah. yeah. So too sharp. Mainz, Dortmund. Then he got PSG. Now he's at Chelsea. Um, even fucking yeah, Oli. By the way, I googled it. It, it was Mines. Mines. Yeah. 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 And, yeah and it was then, definitely Mines. I just wiki Wikipedia it. <laughs> and then Ole had. Um, he was a PE teacher, 
and now he's at United, right? <laughs> but Arteta was collecting cones and now he's manager at Arsenal, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy when you deep it. And I know managers need a chance, but I don't see why they should be getting a chance at the no. top level. No, this is the thing. I don't I don't mind. I, don't, I actually don't mind managers being given a chance here. Oh, yeah. But you cannot put perfume over shit and think it's going to be something else. Like, if it's shit, then it's, it's shit. Mm. They should be, you know, they should be given a chance to get things right. And if not, they should be they should be gone. I gave I'll take a chance. I can sit here and, and admit I was wrong about what I expected from him. I expected a lot more from someone from Arteta who learned under Wenger, who learned under Pep. I don't even <clears throat> put everything aside. As a coach and someone that loves football for the entertainment value rather than the winning, I actually want to see good football over anything. We don't get good football no more in the thing. And for both our two teams, we haven't played good football. You guys haven't played good football since 2013. We haven't played good football since Wenger left. We've gone years without seeing good football at the club. You guys have gone eight years now without seeing quality football at United. And I'm not talking about sporadic spells or sporadic games. I'm talking about our whole Consistently, quality. yeah. It'd be like, yeah, we're playing the Man United way. We haven't played the Arsenal way since Wenger left. Mm. Like, even though we used to lose towards the end of the Wenger's reign, we still played Arsenal football. Mm. You know? But now we're not playing nothing. We're not playing no, we're not playing anything. Like it's unrecognizable. And that's what gets me more angry because our identity of our both both our clubs has gone. Has gone. No one cares about the identity of Chelsea. They they got no flipping identity. Let's be real. Um Man City. <laughs> Man City have Man City don't have anything. Like, you know, let's be real. Like they just they just pep and once Pep's gone, that's it. Yeah. Um, Liverpool, they still have their identity. They still got that passion. They still got so credit to them for still keeping up there. But for us, we we've lost all that. We have lost all that, and you know, it's the that's the most disappointing thing for me. No, no, no I hear that. I hear that, and, and it's true. It's true. Both our teams have lost their identity, and we can't. They're unrecognizable from the teams. They're a shadow of themselves, and it's unfortunate. Obviously, happy days for all the other clubs. But um, it's un- un- unfortunate for us. Message! Uh, two, finally, seeing as you, you, you've you joined us, bruv, your boy, Stephen Bruce, bruv. Oi, <laughs> you, guys, you guys did him dirty, fam. I'm sorry. I'm upset. I'm upset, but I, I wanted Bruce there for life. He should have had a job for life at Newcastle, mate. Hey, man, do you know what, bruv? I wasn't even expecting to talk tonight, blood. I'm chilling. I was just enjoying what you two were were like. There was chemistry there, bruv. Do you know what I mean? So, bruv, it, it, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here, blood. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, let's talk about it because everyone was gassed. Like the party was supposed to start with a bang, but yeah, do you, with know a what, blood? Do, do you know what though, blood? Yeah, I was, and and you guys can vouch for this, bruv. I yeah. never wanted Steve he- uh, Steve's head on a platter that badly. Like, I might have moaned here and there, but I wasn't yeah. really pushing that whole, like, ax him, sack him kind of thing. Yeah. Like, I knew he needed to go. Yeah. And we all did. Do you know what I mean? Like, everyone knew it was inevitable that at some yeah. point his tenure was coming to an end. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And when we first got him, he was replacing Rafa Benitez, big shoes to fill at Newcastle. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think we all looked at him or hoped that he would just be a stopgap. You know yeah. what I mean? Half a season, one season, that's it. Keep us up and then piss off, we get someone else. Yeah. But it turned out to be much longer than, than that. I think he was there for like, what, two, three seasons? Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Third season, was it? Yeah. yeah, I think this was his third season. Yeah, and don't, don't get me wrong, bruv. I didn't enjoy the, the way Newcastle played under him. No. Um, and I did, at times, think the best thing for us was to change our manager. But yeah. I was never on that whole, like, um, you know, lynch mob to get him kind of shit. Like, I wasn't calling for his head every single day of the week because I yeah. understood that he was an experienced manager. And the last thing we needed was to be 
shaken and destabilized again. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because Newcastle are a team that it takes a long time to adjust. If you remember when Rafa came in at the end of the season, he couldn't keep us up. And yeah. it took a long time for him to build the team back up again and get his ideas flowing and then, you know, make us um, uh, get promoted, come back into the Premier League and keep us there. Yeah. Um, it took a long time for that transition. So when Bruce came in, we knew, oh, fuck, we have to go through this again. So it's going to be another shaky season or two. But furthermore, now that Bruce is left, we have to go through that whole transition a, a, again, especially being uh, relegation favourites. How, how scared are you, realistically, of Newcastle going down? Because I'm hearing Fonsenka, the ex-Roma yeah. uh, manager, and as you, your, players, your players are going to be like, you know, we've got this guy coming in, there's not yeah. much about him. He plays very attacking football. You can't afford to be that open in the Premier League. I mean, yeah. we've seen we've we've seen it. They've been open in the Premier League and they're losing. Yeah, you you know, going to yeah. be picked apart. So, how scared? How scared are you of actually being the richest club in the Championship? Oh, that is a violation, blood. <laughs> <laughs> that is a pure violation. I ain't taking that, blood. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I'm not scared at all, bro. I'm not really? scared. At all. No, 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 no. It, it's going to be... Um, who's at the bottom of the table right now? It's Norwich, isn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. And then who's then? Uh, who's after them? It's a new lot. And then after that? Is it not? Uh, like, Burnley, Burnley. I Burnley, Burnley, yeah. So, look, this year's uh, teams that are getting relegated are Burnley, Norwich, and whoever's above Burnley. <laughs> <laughs> What makes you think you guys are going to escape? Like, honestly, like... Bro, money, bro. Money. That's it. It's money. <laughs> yeah, it is money. Hey, you know, those players the, the now... Premier clubs are, the Premier League clubs are playing mafia with you guys, though. They're like, straight away, no, um, you guys are not allowed to do what Man City did. And this is this is what's taking the piss. Because Man City put all of their... um, All of their funds into their... What do you call it? Their... Oh, their marketing stuff. So mm. that's why they were, that's why they, they were able to get around the the financial fair play, but the clubs, <laughs> the Premier League clubs are moving mafia like. They said straight away there's a block on all that, which is illegal by the way. So um, if you guys actually want to go and spend, you can. So <laughs> yeah, exactly, blood. They can moan as much if, if we're using mafia analogies. Yeah. Um, you remember that scene in in Godfather Two? one uh oh, fuck when um all the heads of the five families yeah. get assassinated yeah, yeah. in one scene blood mm. yeah. you remember the dude that got shot through the eye and shit yeah, yeah, yeah. bro i don't care bro you can unionize <laughs> as much as you fucking like bro that scene is inevitably gonna happen oh, yeah. you're gonna see arsenal ceo shot while he's getting a trim do you know <laughs> what i mean you see you're going to see Man United CEO, like, mysteriously fall off a bridge and shit. Like, <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, blood. It, at the end of the day, bruv, it, we're the richest club in the world. Every football player knows that. Every um, fan in the world knows that. Everyone knows we're the richest football team in the world, bruv. Mm -hmm. You can put whatever you, rule you want to put in place, but it's still going to affect you more than it's going to affect us. Yeah. Do you, does, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, this, this, one Man City, that's, this one Man City vetoed it. Yeah, but that's yeah, the yeah. Like, what, uh, For me, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm looking at it like this. If these guys agree to say, like, yeah, Newcastle can't spend X amount, then that means everyone else can't spend X amount. But we're no, still what, richer than everyone else. No, what they're saying in regards to you guys is that, so the way teams like Man City and PSG get around financial fair play is by attributing their assets to like marketing companies and, you know, campaigns externally yeah. that make huge amounts of money. So they can say, look, Newcastle's making so-and-so from this sponsor, so they're able to spend so-and-so when that's the way they get around it. So what the Premier League, what the teams did is they 
oh, that's not allowed no more, which again, I said, it is not ethical. No, it, I don't think they can do that. The only thing they can do is pause it. But if Newcastle were to go spend that money and then take it to cast, they will eventually win um, because it's impossible to make do something. Oh, I like see. That. I see what you're saying now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying now. Um, yeah. Still, I mean, they could try as much as they want. Look, when Mike Ashley sold the club, yeah, Newcastle had no debts, believe that or not. Yeah, Mike no. Ashley was a G, bruv. You guys don't understand how much I rate this guy, bruv. <laughs> like, Mike <laughs> Ashley is a G. As much as he's been the reason why Newcastle have been a shit club for the last 15 years, bruv, Mike Ashley is a fucking G, bruv. Uh, <laughs> we always paid for transfers cash up front, which is something that no other club do. Um, every time where our annual reports came back, like our annual financial reports came back, we were always in profit. Always. We were never in debt. Bro, at one point, we were like amongst the richest teams in Europe when it came um, to our debts and our books. Do you know what I mean? We were better yeah. than Real Madrid. Mm. Do you get what I mean? Because a lot of these, seriously, because a lot of these top teams are all in debt. No, I know that, I know that. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. All in debt. They're all spending money they don't have. Look at Barcelona. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Newcastle will never like that. So um, we've got a history of that. And I'm sure like, look, these Saudis have come in, all right? And of course, one of the biggest selling points were that look you're pick you're buying a club that has no baggage yeah they couldn't do that uh, with man united because you remember at one point they were, the saudis were looking to buy man united yeah now, if they were to buy man united tj i don't know the numbers but how was, badly in debt are united we're well, not in debt it's the glazers debt but basically um i think at the time when they wanted i think we they i think we were worth like 2.7 billion so the Saudis were looking to put like three, 3.5. The Glazers then turned around and said they want eight, eight mm. billion for the club. And that's when the Saudis were like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they went elsewhere, bruv. But yeah, because yeah, the Saudis were like, we're not going to pay off. We're not going to buy the club, pay off all your debts and then still give you a lot of money to spend. Yeah. Like, yeah. nah. So, so that's why they looked elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. Well, with Newcastle, that was never the case. So... A lot like, you know, um, Steve Bruce was still there, which means a lot of the people that work in and around the club, especially on those things, they're still there. So obviously the owners are smart. Enough. Like these people that took over Newcastle, they are smart people, bruv. They're, they're not people to be fucked around with. They got, um, the bid got rejected last year. They took this shit to court one and, uh, and managed to take over the club. Yeah. So they're ready, to, they're ready to take it there if they have to. But mm -hmm. furthermore, it's not a club that necessarily will or has needed um, that to sort of thrive. As I said, we were never in debt. We've always, our books have always been good. You know, we've been stush with money, but we, our books are good. So, yeah. um, bro, but there, I, it doesn't like go circling all the way back to your whole relegation question is that, um, no, I think we're going to get a new manager in. And obviously there's an incentive now to stay in the Premier League because, you know, all those players that play well and get us up, they're all getting bonuses and renewed contracts and shit like that, bro. So the, the incentives there, the drive, the motivation is there. It's going to be a fresh start. Wh whichever manager we pick, um, it's, it's going to be something the fans are going to look forward to. As I said, yeah. it's going to start the, the new regime, pun intended, but it's going to start the new regime, bro. So well, this, Fonseca like dude, this Fonseca dude, you got to fill me in on him because I know nothing about it. Roma, he used to think Roma very attacking. Uh, Tottenham were in for him. Um, I'm not convinced on him. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not convinced him at all. I think he's too attacking. I like his uh, trust. Don't get me wrong. I like his philosophy, but I like balance as well. You can't yeah. be overly attacking. It needs to be some. But is he? But he's, 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 he's the number one target right now. You still got the likes of Gerard Lampard and Eddie Howe being mentioned as well. But is this way? Was he was he managing Roma when um, what was it like? Smalling was there and they had a good spell and what was it? Yeah. Jacko was banging it in and yeah, uh, yeah, they, yeah, he was there. Who, who else was there at that time, bro? Didn't they have some ballers at the club? They got loads. They got they got Pellegrini, Mkhitaryan, um, yeah, El Shawari, Pedro's there, El Shawari. Um, oh, really? They got another baller. But the thing is, I mean, Jacko's I mean, not there no more. Jacko's gone to Inter, but. 
But I still, I still like that though, man. I still like the fact that he's what he's known for is being uberly attacking. Yeah. I love that, man. I'd rather lose the game, but like have a, a really lovely back and forth battle. You know, but, twenty-seven shots on target kind of thing. Then and it, play, like it the best out of um sit maximum. Then I say come in because he's the best player in the Premier League for me. Who Saint Maxi? Yeah, by far, in it. Bro, this guy. Bro, tell me, yeah, tell me another player that you want to go see than Saint Maxi. Another hey, player in the Premier League. I think it was on our group. Someone posted a meme saying, um, "Footballers don't play like they used to in the past because back, back in the day they used to play like, like, um, like freestyle football, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? Those really technical players used to play like freestyle football, but all the players now you can tell they're from the academy." Yeah, they're, yeah they're, they're just robots. They yeah, are just robot. robots. So, oh, bro, St. Max, so don't get me wrong, he's a, he's a throwback. Is a throwback. Exactly, bro. He is a throwback, bro. He, look, he looks like a superhero. Like, he actually played, like, with the bandana and everything, the skill moves, the way bro. he energises the crowd. Bro, this guy is literally straight he's out sick. of comic book. But mm. I'm telling you, I, I, I just want to get a new cost of just St. Maxi on the back because you don't understand, as a coach... For someone that loves expression, I you don't understand how much I rate. And I, I know what, and I'm upset that nobody, yeah, none of the other football fans rates this guy like they should. Like, yes, Mo Salah is exciting right now, but since Maxi's been doing this every time he steps on that pitch. Hey, he, but let me tell you, uh, let, let me tell you this, yeah. Say, so, say, so Maxi might not get the ratings, um, you know, by the pundits or whatever. But bro, every time I talk to people and talk to people about um, football and they ask me who I'm a fan of and I say Newcastle, guess who the first thing they talk, get, just take a guess. Bro. John Joe <laughs> yeah. Shelby. Hey, bruv, you're wrong, bruv. It's actually Joe Linton, but then, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But no, for real, just uh, realistic, like everyone talks about St. Maxi. The first yeah. thing that comes out of their mouth is St. Maxi. So, he, like for me, and the message that he wrote for for Steve Bruce was classy, mm, yeah. bro. Bare class, yeah. bro. So not only is he like straight out of a comic book, he's got those moral principles in check as well. Do you know? Yeah, he has. He's a proper. There was a thing of him doing. Uh, I think some YouTuber or something just invited him, and he was happy to do it. A little uh, nutmeg competition, you know, you know, help promoting his thing. Like he's the guy is a top. Top dude, man. I like, like I've got some for me. I wanna, if I could, I'll be his freaking PR manager, um, just to get him out there in terms of what he is. And you yeah. know the funny thing is, the reason he's not a big club no more is because these managers do not want these maverick players no more. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's too much of a risk. Mm -hmm. for me, any team, we he belongs in no, no offense, but he belongs at the top level to show what he's got. But no team is gonna play him because they don't like these players that take risk anymore. And this is this is it. This yeah. is it. Saint Maxi's. You you know what's crazy? Um, just about Saint Maxi, yeah, is that now yeah. that you're saying this um attacking coach is coming in, it's just gonna be perfect, bro. And I feel I'll like. Try. He, he made, bruv, and you know how company signed with Man City like a year before the Shakes took over? And yeah. then he became a club legend with a statue outside, bruv. I could mm. see that happening with St. Maxi, bruv. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He could be, he could be our Vincent company, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. Um, too, finally, before we move on to Prem Predictions, what is, what is the, uh, what is it to quote, a, what is the fat waste of space and stupid, tactically adept cabbage heads? Um, what is his legacy? <laughs> <laughs> at Newcastle, well, how would how will Steve Bruce be remembered at Newcastle Football Club? Uh, for me personally, nothing but respect for the dude with what he had and the limited resources at his disposal. My man, I mean. He done the best he could. Mm. No, I mean, do you know what I mean? And that's and as a man, I respect that.
100, 100. Nah, listen, at the end of the day, that first season, he finished in, I think he finished 10th that first season that he took over, didn't he? Or something, yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, something so it like was, that, bro. Yeah. It, it, was, it wasn't all bad. It wasn't all bad. And I did feel sorry for him, but... um, <sighs> Taking my banter hat off, as a man, I don't dislike any guy. For, you know, I don't, I don't know the guy. He's probably a nice dude and everything. But as a football coach and as a football person, I'm sorry, but I want the likes of your Steve Bruce's out of the game. <laughs> and I'm and I'm being real because, as I said, I want football to start evolving again, going to the next level. And managers like Steve Bruce are just dinosaurs that don't belong in the current game no more because they get the job over younger managers that are willing to try things and they only play one way like there's a reason he was never liked there's a reason why everyone's acting like it was it was unfair why he was never liked he was never liked because even though he managed Sunderland he could have come in and made a statement by doing something different and playing the Newcastle way but he never did ever ever not one game did you be like yes Bruce we're gonna get the ball down and play you know we're gonna do things differently it was always the same two banks of four you know or five in midfield or sit back or whatever and it's not gonna fly with fans especially Newcastle fans unfortunately you picked the wrong fan base to go to because they are passionate about their football and we're talking about, you know, our older fan base that grew up with the likes of your, um, you know, back here with Kevin Keegan, Brian with Russell. your players, man like Aspria, you know, Shearer, all these guys there, Bobby Robson when he came in. So they're used to that kind of football and they grew up on that type of football. So as much as he's a nice guy, the manager like Steve Booth needs to be, just need to be handed out by now. I don't want to see them no more in the Premier League. Or, or at football for, for that matter. Fuck <laughs> for me, bruv. Bro, you, you got me hating Steve Bruce all of a sudden, bro. <laughs> you, you, nah, it's okay. Bro, you got me out here with fuck Steve Bruce t-shirts on there. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, it's, fair, it's, it's, a, it's a fair point, and I get what the truth is saying. Like, I, I understand it. Um, and 100%, all fans are entitled to their opinion. You don't have to like everybody. Um, you can dislike whoever you want. But I think, <laughs> I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, um, I think Steve Roof was in Marvin's room, bruv, a little bit, listening to Drake, bruv, because <laughs> he's just in his feelings, bruv. But I don't condone the, 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 some of the stuff that was said about him. I, I think, I think it's unfair to, to do that. Um, I know, I know everyone gets abused. Like, and he's not the only one that that's been getting this this sort of abuse, but um, it is what it is. It's part of parcel of management in it. But um, hold tight, Steve Bruce in Marvin's room right now, bro. Just hopefully, hopefully, nothing bad happens from this because he did sound like what you were saying. It sounded a little bit suicidal, but hopefully, he just gets through it, takes a break from football, and yeah. if anything, he can like start taking his grandkids to football games and shit now. Um, but, uh, finally, as we wrap up, hey, bro, you, you just better hope Steve Bruce doesn't watch this fucking podcast and hear what the <laughs> have to say, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that, bro, that was that was just soul crushing, bro. bro you know what? That wasn't, bro, that wasn't even like one of them ones where you know someone posts some funny shit on Twitter, like an abusive, funny comment. What, what the truth said was like some clinical psychological breakdown of someone bro like he fucking took my man's soul away bro you know what I mean <laughs> well, basically, oh, no, like, I've, basically... I've, I've, I've been wanting to call out these managers for a long time so <laughs> oh bro listen well, to all the fans out there yeah we'll have a special um episode on Neil Warnock hosted by <laughs> the group, you know what I mean, hey, he's another one <laughs> no, bro, I hate him I hate it. <laughs> Freaking hell. All right. Let's go for Prem predictions. I got back to winning ways. Uh, dominated this round. No, I was robbed. 
<laughs> like that would have just given you the one extra point, but I don't I care. Think I was wrong. You've, you've learned the lesson now to go with your gut feelings, Man United. I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna force you to go for a draw. <laughs> um, yeah. What was my perfect result? It was one of the two nils. Who won two nil? No, one nil. I got the one. I got the Chelsea one right. Chelsea mm. Brentford. So I got the perfect. I said one nil Chelsea. I think did, I score any, did I win any of the games? You got one right. <laughs> yeah, two just got one. Which one? I think that was the Man City one. Because everyone predicted Man City to win. What did I say? I, I said You um, said you said five nil. How much did they win by? They just won two nil. Oh see. I told you it was gonna be low. I told you. I told you. That's true, you know. That is ba- Bandy were playing for their life. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were begging. After that first goal went in, they were putting their body on line like it was a World Cup or something. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro, you know what's funny, yeah? At full time, they all celebrated that. Like, yes! That like, we, <laughs> <laughs> like, we just kept it to two this time. <laughs> I'm telling you. Freaking egg. Um, let's start with the first game, actually tomorrow. Yeah. Arsenal, Aston Villa, Arsenal are at home. I'm going first. I'm going two one Aston Villa. Yes, for the first time, I'm predicting us losing because I'm on a mission now because I need us to start the club. I need him gone now. I'm, I'm tired of it. I've I've held out long enough. I've tried to give him a chance to walk away and do the right thing, but now he's gonna get Steve Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he's getting Steve Bruce. So I'm going 2 1 after the Villa. 2. I'm going to go um, 1 0 Arsenal. This guy just loves to go against me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but realistically, realistically, it, you know. No, we, 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 I don't think the reason because you don't watch us, you, you're still living in the, that thing that we're, we're Arsenal. We are so poor. We are so poor, man. TJ? Still, uh, yeah, I'll still stick with 1 0. 2 1 Arsenal. You guys are. I don't know where that's Mr. coming from. Mr. KA said 1 1. Oh, so, oh, crap. He's coming, he's coming along. He's coming along. Even KA knows. Uh, next one is Chelsea Norwich. No Lukaku, no Werner. TJ? 3-0 Chelsea. Still? Hmm. I'm not going to keep knowing, you know. Two? I think Chelsea are a stronger team without Lukaku and Bern. So I'm going to go astronomical and go like 4-0. But the reason why Chelsea are better without Lukaku is because they use him as a target, man. They don't use him the same way Conte used him, which was as like a, like he could come deep, he could do whatever. He had freedom on the Conte. Yeah. Um, I agree to an extent. I do, yeah. I do agree. Yeah, I, think I think he struggles in this new Chelsea system, unfortunately. Proper. I think Tuchel is Tuchel in too much with the fucking formation. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, he's, um, he, he's a good player, but they're just not using him properly. And Werner is just, He's just not, he's just cack, isn't he, bro? So, <laughs> don't let Rush hear you say that. Werner is freaking. <laughs> bro, I don't know how he, like, bro, even I jumped off the bandwagon when I saw how cack he was. You know what I mean? Like, bro, you remember me back in the day hyping him up and he, bro, he's just, he's just one of them ones, isn't it, bro? He's just one of them ones. Yeah, like, 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 that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just have to cut your losses, boy. Yeah, bro, exactly, bro. Like, it is what it is. There's bare of them that, that were like that, bro. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think they're a stronger team without them too. So I'm going to go 4 0. I like that 4 0 scoreline. I'm going to go 2 0. Okay, he said 1 0. Okay, he went 1 0 this one, yeah. Uh, do we look at Norwich score? No, I don't think Norwich could score. Uh, Brighton, Man City. I'll do this one. Brighton, Man City. I'm going to go. One four, Brian and just plucky. And go one four to Man City. 
DJ. Three one city. Three one. I'm gonna go. Oh, I want to say two two or one nil Brighton. I don't know why, but I'm feeling Brighton on this one. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. One nil. One nil. One nil Brighton. Fuck it. You must have had a trip down there, innit? I met someone special. <laughs> uh, K said. K a... said three two city. Three two. I was gonna make a controversial comment, but. They're cancelling everyone now, so I need to. <laughs> no, bro. TJ, TJ will cut it out, bro. Say, say it, bro. <laughs> I was gonna say, as long as the person that you met, you know, is a is a girl and not. Oh, bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's a um, low next... blow, blood. That is a fucking low blow, bro. <laughs> the Jeez, next dude. game is West Ham um, <laughs> and Tottenham. So, ooh, London derby, uh, two. Tottenham and who? West Ham? Yeah. Uh, I think West Ham will win, you know. I'm going to go 2-1 West Ham. 2-1. This is a hard one to predict. This is very hard. This is very hard to predict. I'm going to go 2-2. I don't know who's going to win this one. DJ? 2-1 Tottenham. Really? Uh, K's gone 2-1 West Ham. 2-1 West Ham. Oh, tell him to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> um, the big one. Start TJ this one. Man- <laughs> Manchester United versus Liverpool at Old Trafford. 8-0 Liverpool. This man never write down his score lines, you know, and he wonders why I force him. Man, every time you want him gone, the rabbit is coming out. Ole Houdini, you know it's going to be a 1 1 masterclass. 2 1 United. Oh my days, what? That caught me by surprise. 2 1 United. <laughs> no, I, don't, I didn't know it was like that, man. This guy's trying to double bluff me. Hey, Two what's the real scoreline? 2 1 United. What's the real scoreline? <laughs> 2 1 United. Oh my days, this guy. <laughs> I don't even know what to write down anymore if you. Um, Tooth. I'm going to go 3 um, 2 Liverpool. Ooh. High scoring game, yeah. I'm gonna go two 0 Liverpool. I think they score early, and then they score late when United are trying to score. But the K K K put four two Liverpool. Four two at Old Trafford. I swear Liverpool don't ever score more than one at Old Trafford or something. They won last year for was that Old Trafford? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot you had that yeah, beat four two yeah. in it. Yeah, mm. that's what okay. TJ's finally on the ollies at the wheel. That's what I'm up. saying. Hey, we need to show that tattoo. We need to have that meme of that ollie tattoo. <laughs> yeah, proper. TJ, throw that in. Like, throw in the picture of your tattoo, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he, should just, he, should just, he just pull up his sleeve, yeah, and then he should cut away to the meme of that tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trust me. <laughs> hey, for people hey. that don't know, if you Google ollie Tattoo, Oli, Oli, Solskjaer tattoo. You will see it. You will see <laughs> tattoo. And Sorry, I, bro. I, I remember. Tattoo. I remember. That's a, that's the a tattoo TJ is getting. Yeah, if Ole wins the trophy at the end of the season and finishes in the top three, bro. You know what's deep, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, St. As well said he he will get the ta- he will get matching tattoos with TJ. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the tattoo. I want. I want to see it, fam. He's winning a trophy and finishing in the top three. Do you know what I mean? And the tattoos, they're, they're going to have matching tattoos, yeah? But then they're going to personally um, buy, like, VIP tickets to, to go meet Ollie and, like, <laughs> shake his hand and, and do a QA and a with him and actually try and get him on the potty, bro. And talk about how much they love him. 
Listen, if I ever did a meet and greet with Oli, bruv, he's ending up in the boot of a van, the back of the van, bruv. <laughs> Never to be seen again. Hey, hey, stop the blasphemy, fam. <laughs> Never to be seen again, bruv. Bro, you, know, you know that's getting cut out the potty. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, T- TJ's going to get his first sensor, bruv. How do you feel, bruv? <laughs> I know, hey, you know, you, you know, they start um thing not people for like, you know, what, what do they call it? It's, it's um hate speech or something. <laughs> you know, no, listen, if they want real hate speech, bro. <laughs> anyway, anyway, people, that is it from us. Let us know what you think in the comment section. Let us know what you think. Um, who's gonna win? Is it gonna be Liverpool? Is it gonna be United? Um, how much time does Oli have? Is he on borrowed time? Or will he last till the end of the season? Um, Arteta, are you Arteta in? Are you Arteta out? Should Arteta Only be Arteta gone? Out. There's no more Arteta in. Um, this Arteta in, bro. There's always Arteta in. You got the Arteta sexuals, bro. Like they're out <laughs> just as much as the Oli sexuals, bro. Um, and Steve Bruce, let us know what you think about Steve Bruce. Are you with the truth? Like, bro, the the verbal abuse that Steve Bruce has been getting is it fair? Um, did the truth white write that tweet? <laughs> Did you write that tweet about Steve Bruce, bro? <laughs> bro, I, I, I just, I just ethered Steve Bruce, man. He, he ain't coming back again. <laughs> bro, but it, bro, he, bro, that is, that is so true, blood. That is the only word I could use after hearing that. Bro, you ethered him, blood. <laughs> Steve Bruce. Bro. <laughs> bro, bro. Bro, all you, bro, hey, TJ, TJ, at the beginning, at the beginning of um, the truth speech, yeah, Put a couple of gunshots and put like, <laughs> Steve Bruce, what's up? Yo, I know you ain't talking about me, dog. You, what? Fuck Steve Bruce. Oh, oh shit. Thing. You know my stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. God's son across the belly. I'll prove you lost already, bro. <laughs> Oh, hey, listen, man, listen, listen, listen. You eat love... so badly, hey, <laughs> let, you gotta do let... that for Neil Warnock. And <laughs> let us know what you think your predictions are for this weekend. Um, I want to, thank... <laughs> I want to thank my guys, the truth and two. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Safe, bro. Um, people coming up. Uh, Fight talk will be back. Um, as we preview UFC 267 um, on yeah I think it's 267 um, yeah so Fight Talk will be back um, next week um, yeah, also obviously a Fight Talk there's a few um, there's a few good uh, things coming up actually um, good, yeah there is. Um, also obviously Football Chat will be back next week as well um, I don't think there's anything else coming up next week, to be honest. But yeah, yeah. So <laughs> those two will be back, and then as we go on, there'll be more fight talks coming up because we got some, we got boxing coming up as well, and obviously the UFC cards. Uh, we're all waiting for uh, Plant and Canelo. And, oh yeah, Plant Canelo. Yeah, and then uh, Crawford and um, Porter. Crawford and Porter as well. Unfortunately, we can't get to talk about Dillian White, bro, because. He's out injured. I'm so upset, man. I, I know Tooth loves Dillian White. Dillian White's fight. I know. I know Tooth loves talking about Dillian White. And I, and I know he's bro, getting ready. I've got nothing to say. Bro, you're getting ready to eat for Dillian bro, White I'm, as well. <laughs> bro, one. Bro, listen. First of all, I've got nothing to say, bro. Steroids. <laughs> Uh, and on that note people we shall see you oh yeah as <laughs> usual don't forget to like share comment and subscribe to the channel get the likes up the subscriptions up all that good stuff as uh, i said share 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 we are here don't forget to join our social media pages as well um stay safe out there people and we shall see you very very soon peace <laughs>